Hello, my name is Daniel Lawrence. Uh, I run pre-flood artifacts and unusual objects on Facebook. I am a Christian, uh, as in I believe in Yahweh and Yahshua, and in my beliefs and my studies, I have read a lot, traveled most of the United States, and I'm a member of the sovereign nation of the uh, Choctaw people. We, or I, would like to talk to you, whoever's out there that likes rocks or crystals or fossils and stuff like that. Well, this is episode one, and I'm going to show you kind of how to identify mud fossils or pre-flood artifacts, and what to look for and how to pay attention to the details that will bring a rock alive to you in its historical value, and, well, let me ask you this. If a rock could speak, what would it tell you? It would tell you its history. That's all it has. It's nothing but a rock, right? All right, so, something like this, let's say, obsidian, silica, you know, glass, lava rock, lots of names for it. Now, over here in Oregon, we have a place called Glass uh, Glass Mount Glass Butte, and it has uh, most colors of obsidian from greens, reds to blues. Blue, of course, and green obviously being a little harder to find. Um, but what I'm going to talk to you today about is how to identify mud fossils that people aren't quite accurately seeing. Or they are seen, and they know it's something, but they can't tell what it was. Well, I'm going to talk as in the beliefs of the Native American people, who, and of course this goes from tribe to tribe, so again, if you disagree, that's, go ahead, that's all up to you. Uh, people could disagree, 1 plus 1 equals 2. And they think it means three, doesn't necessarily mean it means three, does it? But they're more than welcome to think that. So, that being said, let's, uh, let's take a look at some things. An agate cast is a part of an animal that, when covered up with lava or flood or whatever, silica goes in and fills up the void left behind, and sometimes it's like a, a uh, top of a frog or... You know, little pieces of it here and there, and most people can't recognize that kind of thing just by the piece of an animal. Who would, if it was just the skin of my finger, would you know it was the skin of my finger? No. I mean, you'd have to have pretty good, uh, pretty good eyesight to see that kind of thing. But there are definitely, we do know there are agate casts out there. They do, we do disagree on how they're made. Your evolutionists would say that the agate cast was a organic piece of material that got flooded over, and over time the silica leaked through the cracks and filled it up like you would a clay mold, or if you were making a, a mold or anything kind of pouring object, you pour the mold into it, let it dry, you pop it open, and you pull out your uh, pin or your cap, or your knife, or your whatever you are making at that point. And yes, I'm just laying here talking to you guys, because, uh, you know, that's how I'm going to do my my show. I'm going to do it re relaxed, so that it can be talked. No stress. Otherwise, why do it, right? Well, let's move on to some rocks now. Now this. Look at the angles. We do that. We humans do angles. Yeah, there might be crystals that grow, and we know crystals grow, and they grow in nice little patterns too. But notice, not perfect angles, and this isn't perfect by no means. This is this right here is depending on who says what or whatever. It could be a bloodstone. Notice red, green, green. 
of course, I made this and carved it. It's actually a, uh, there's another name for it. It's a rare rock, and it only comes in about this size, and it's a, it has a red stripe in the middle about a little purple circle. I have a few of them. Uh, I can't remember the name of the scientific name of it, but that is a human-made rock, or carved rock. We have a, just, just giving an example of kind of, we make that. Well, here is kind of what your agate cast would look like. Notice one side. Obviously, what we're looking at here See you just make sure everybody sees that. Is an ear. Of what? I have no idea. I'm not saying I know exactly. Oh, it's a dog, Labrador's ear. No, no. I'm just saying it's an ear. I'm not saying it's an alien ear or giant ear. I'm just saying it's an ear. Our tribes, our tradition is that a light made our spirit animals, and these spirit animals. Oh, nowadays we know they were what we consider fossils. Flash of light hit them and made them spirit animals. Is this a story? Blah, blah, blah. Flash of light hit them, petrified them, just like along Mount St. Helens' uh, eastern ridge, where all the trees were turned to stone instantly by moving the, wa the water two feet to the left of an object by sound. Now, that's not the explosion. That's... The, and you watch everything poof, but still stands up that in that incident right before the fire and everything else mud all hits it has now turned to stone that's petrification takes point zero 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 part of a second otherwise it couldn't be done we don't do that volcanoes exploding at such a massive poof amount they cause that kind of thing in our traditions, has happened here in America before. Uh, when Crater Lake went off, that is our tradition that when it blew up, it petrified most of the continent. It also is what we believe created the Great Flood. It goes all the way around the world, comes back to uh, the... What town would that be? Wenatchee, the Wenatchee tribe, uh, the Wenatchee tribal area, or the city of Wenatchee, and from there you can see where it drops off huge boulders and slowly drains away to the a uh, couple of craters down there below Eugene. That I believe, or we believe, would be the wells of the deep where the the Great Flood drained away at the very end. There's plenty of reasons why we believe this. And I'm, I'm going to give you my main one right now. You ever take a cup, swirl it around. If you have stuff that floats, it's the last thing to go down the drain. Like, if you were to stop it right before it goes empty, you'd just have all the nasty, like, lightweight stuff that floated on top of the water. Well, over there in Salem and the Willamette Valley, you have something called petrified eyeballs. Yes eyeballs. And those petrified eyeballs, well, when they're covered with a bunch of gunk, foam, and all that kind of stuff, and the water's really heavy from being flood material and stuff like that, they float. Now, not, not all flies, but a lot of them. And uh, if the worldwide flood, imagine a two-mile wave going, here's the person, two-mile wave, no, no, you get hit as you're running. Your feet get ran over first, your head last. Unfortunately for us, when you do that, you pop. And when you pop, your eyeballs don't take much pressure. They're the first things that explode out of your head. And they get covered up with stuff. That sea foam, you know, like, you ever go to the ocean and see it's really dirty? 
and there's this nasty foam everywhere and all that kind of stuff. Well, that foam gets stuck with a lightweight material, comes like a concrete or mud, which becomes dirt, which then has thunder eggs in it. Oh, I mean, eyes. Well, that seems pretty radical. But let's see some proof on this, right? First proof. And you'll have to do this research yourself because I am a firm believer in don't believe what anybody says. Find out and read or research for yourself. And that's how I did it. That's how you should do it. And I'm by no means very smart. So, dig for the truth. Even says so in the Bible, you Christians. So, let's take a look. First, what do you expect from a mud, fo mud fossil? And what would it need to be to be a mud fossil? And what were those creatures back then, and what kind of stuff would they have on their eye or around their eye to make it? Or to identify a, the mud fossil eyeball? Well, to identify it, first you would look for that kind of mud that's all the way around it, or that foam. Uh, you'd want to be able to break that stuff off lightweight, really easy, like dirt. And not only that, you'd find weird stuff in it. You'd find stone eyeballs, because they were petrified, remember? Well, let's take a look. Next thing, what were they? Were they mammals, reptiles? Did the, or what shape were they? Were they, they long, lengthwise with eyeballs that stuck out of their head? Uh, were they alligators, human, you know? There's a couple different skulls that hold their eyeballs in there a little differently for how this would happen. It, to me, would need, of course, the eyeball shape. And I want you to notice... See my nice little dark eyelashes right there? Mm -hmm, nice pretty, huh? Well, when you're the color of my eyelashes, your eyelashes might be a different color. Or the the liquid, the pink part, the that part. It's that part. Now, as a reptile, especially back then, camouflage is important. Very, very important. You got dinosaurs going around. You want to hide. Even the big dinosaurs want to hide so they can eat. So, let's take a closer look, shall we? See where the pupil would be? Now, you know, I'm sure you've noticed the outside edges of it now. Weird bumps, weird bumps like a mud, but it's not. That would be scales. That would be the scales of a reptile. Why? Well, these creatures lived a lot longer. They were a better camouflage. They were very combat built things. And very hard to blend, very hard to hide when your eyes are bright blue or pink or any color other than brown. Your brown eyes can hide hide better than other ones. Now, I would think that because of the shape and because, like I said, it looks appears to be scales along the top and bottom still, that... That this, right, oh, and look, a broken, not a circle, not circle. Something is missing on right this side right here. Well, if we had a better camera, 
right here is pink, pinkish red. The only part of it like that, except for the back. Now, also, keep in mind, notice the white look on, on top of the dark stone in the back. Well, if you notice on the back of your eyeball, or some eyeballs, anyway, there's a thin layer of skin that keeps your juices in. That would be that. But anyway, back to the pink part. So that little pink part right there. That's pretty important. Why? Because that tells us something about the shape of the skull that this eye would have been on. And I say on because this was not this right here stuck out of the skull. And this piece right here, that pink part, connected to a nose. When it was broken off by the force of the flood, it took that piece, this upper piece, and this lower piece with it. And it was stuck out. I'm thinking more like a alligator or a crocodile than you or me with that inset eyeball. Well, now that we've taken a look, I mean, this is, I, I've, I've cracked these open, I've cut them open, I've seen the, the multiple layers, and I've seen the bottom part where the veins go down, I've cut them into um, crystal balls, I've sold them, I've made jewelry out of them, I always try to leave a card with them, but now I want the, I want the rest of the world and the rest of my, our America, to know the truth and not be fooled by what others think or think they think they know. Because with the, the mud fossil pre-flood ideology comes a certain fear, especially for those that don't know God or Jesus. That fear to them is so overpowering that they will not allow themselves to see this. They can't, their, their eyes are open to it, and that might be themselves, that might be something else. I don't know that. I'm just telling the truth. As much as people, most people do not like that. And they don't. I will get lots of people yelling at me. That's a thunder egg, that's a thunder egg. Okay, there are thunder eggs out there, but there are also petrified eyeballs. I have a human one. And that's where most of organ opals come from, actually. You know, the opal is the eye. But the eye of something like you or me. With colored retinas. So, we've identified eyeball. Agate casts. I'm going to give you a one more second to look at this. To see if you can figure out what part of the animal it is. Alright, do, 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 Alright, that's over. Let's take a look. Now on this one, we have some damage right there. But if you notice the lines of the crystal, that damage was done before petrification. Same with this bit, right? These two spots were broken or cut while it was still wet. This piece up here, afterwards. You can tell by how it, how it breaks and what it looks like, all microscopes, all that kind of fancy uh, scientific stuff. It don't matter to you and me. We're talking truth. And sometimes truth is simply just said. That's an ear. Of what? Again, I don't know. Mm, I'm just saying what it was, what it is. Why I say that? Well, again, my Native American peoples, Choctaw specifically, that's since that's what I am, that's what I know. Well, our shamans, or some shamans, would collect the ears of spirit animals because they believed that having them and using them as musical instruments would call the spirits. 
So you could control them. You could threaten them with their bodies. The old begging, don't listen to me, I'm gonna break your body. Then you won't have a physical thing on this earth anymore for somebody to talk to. So the shaman would keep the ear. Let's see if I can get this one to work. It's really hard to get a shaman's whistle to work. Just so you know, there always is a trick on how to do it so that not everybody can just pick it up and go. <laughs> not that easy. Like I said, not that easy. That's why I'm showing you me, me having trouble with it because it takes a while to learn that one shaman had this one object and his only duty was to you know, summon that one. So obviously I don't believe, have too much, well, I believe in it, but I also believe it's not the right thing to do. And so now that I figured it out, <clears throat> that would be how you called your spirit animal. Well, like I said, <sighs> takes a lot of work. But so this would be how this shaman called his. his uh, spirit animal, or as I believe and most of us believe, demons. That's why most of your crystals and rocks are used in black magic. It's their bodies. You threaten them, threaten to break their bodies to make them listen. Now please don't go around doing this trying to cast magic spells and stuff. It'll have very dire effects on you. Like, horrible. Don't bring attention to yourself unless you have to. Don't. Not worth it. So now we saw all that. Let's take a look at a few more. If you ever see a thumb, let's do another one, shall we? Let's. How about snapping turtles? The one thing you need to know: snapping turtle heads are covered in like what is their skin, but would look like the bottom of a pond, and a pond is covered in stuff. So your snapping turtle. Would look more like. And again, another shaman of my people at some point. Probably use this as a whistle. Why do I say this? Because that's kind of what got us and a certain other religion fighting and got my people killed for knowing that there's a lot of power in knowing that all crystals are, were animals of mixed descent 
with human blood. Human. Humans are smart. Even half-breeds. Even animals. So when you hear all those stories about humans fighting uh, half-human armies like orcs, goblins, or centaurs, and harpies, and so on, that's very true. Because as soon as uh, we mix our DNA, have a child, and that child has more children, we don't know how that genetic offspring is going to become. But we do know it is no longer human, and no longer, during an emergency circumstance, would look at you like itself. It might look at you like your dinner. And they did. I mean, they yum yum. <laughs> Virgin women. Yuck. No good. So now that we saw that, and this is episode one, like I said, of pre-flood artifacts and unique uh, findings over on uh, pre-flood art uh, pre on Facebook, but also YouTube. Uh, my name is Daniel Lawrence. I'm a Choctaw a member of the Choctaw Nation. And uh, feel free to email me, montanaruns at hotmail.com, with any questions or comments or pictures you want to send. And let's kick this off. Let's show our, our people the truth so that they are not fooled. Love you all. Bye.